Let's get some inside analysis now. Mark Percy joins us, founder and CEO of BTP Advisors. Mark, thank you very much for being with us. I understand you worked with the Bongo campaign. Tell us about the work you were doing. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, tell us about the work that you did with the Bongo campaign during this presidential election. Well, we, uh, we are a political consultancy company. We were doing opinion polling work and uh, message development and campaign strategy for the campaign for, uh, for 18 months uh, before the election day. Uh, and that involved uh, very deep and uh, in-depth voter research, understanding sentiment about people's motivation to vote, their concerns, what they liked about candidates, what they didn't like about candidates, what they thought about the political scene, what they thought about foreign countries, what they thought over Gabon. So really a, a very, a very in-depth study. I think probably arguably the most, most in-depth study that's been made of, uh, uh, of the political sentiment of, of the people of Gabon at any time. So what, the message I'm getting is that you have a real insight into what people in Gabon might have been thinking ahead of this election. What do you think has actually happened? Because the way this is all being sold is that this coup d'etat has happened to get rid of basically a uh, kleptocratic leader, uh, someone who was keeping the country down. Do you think that is the case? Do you think that's what the people of Gabon were thinking pre-election? No, I don't think it's what the people of Gabon were thinking pre-election. I think that uh, uh, according to our study, uh, President Bongo was a very popular man. I mean, there was a lot of sympathy for him personally. He was personally very well liked, even amongst people who would not be prepared to vote for him in this election or any other. Uh, people did not see him as a bad man. They saw him as a, uh, a decent man. Uh, they certainly believed that some of the people surrounding him and some of the people in the government were perhaps not of his quality. Uh, but, uh, but, but, but he was was not considered uh, anything other than a, 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 a generous steward of the country. I mean, certainly it was the case that uh, people were restless, uh, people were concerned about the cost of living, people were concerned that the government had to limit on its promises. But frankly, these are things that you could experience in, in politics in many, many parts of the world, including the Western world. I mean, what we, what we certainly also did not see in any regard was that people were interested in a change of government through anything other than democratic means. So we're not disputing the fact that there is this aspect of kleptocracy about the entire six decades of Bongo rule. But I think what you're saying is that there maybe there's another aspect going on there, some kind of other pre-planned nature of this coup d'etat. Is, is, is that what you're getting at? Well, I think you have two points here. I mean, the first thing I'd say is that I don't think you can blame the son for the sins of the father. I think that he is a very different man from Omar Bongo. I mean, I think he was a reluctant leader in many ways. Uh, I think he was, you know, he's a very accomplished musician. I think he was very happy to stay in that life. I'm not sure he really saw necessarily a political life for himself when he, uh, when he, when he originally took office. But that said, uh, I think that uh, I think that yes, people were. People, you know, there were a number of people in the country who wanted change, were expecting this election to be close uh, uh, all the way through those 18 months, but we were not expecting, uh, and we, we saw no sentiment of people wanting uh, change of government through anything other than democratic means. I accept what you're saying, that you can't blame this, the father for the sins of the son. Ali Bongo, though, has amassed uh, an amazing fortune on, on the back of that. So I think if we accept that, let's move to the idea of this coup and whether the military has acted in a spontaneous manner because of what was deemed to be electoral fraud during the result or whether there was a different strategic planning behind that. Do you think there was that kind of planning going on from the military's perspective? I, 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 I'm sure this was well planned uh, in advance. Uh, why do I think that? Well, for a number of reasons. First of all, it seemed to go, frankly, very smoothly. Uh, if, if, if that's the right uh, description for, for, for what has happened. I also know that the president's son, for example, who was heading back to his family home uh, shortly before the results were, the official results were declared for, you know, he, he, he knew what the result was going to be. He was going back with family members and others. They were having a, you know, small group of them having a celebration at his house. Um, as immediately after the results, the official result was declared, the military who were uh, guarding his house turned on them. 
and arrested them. Now, you can't tell me that's because, you know, somebody woke up in the morning and didn't like the results and thought we'd have a military coup. It was a bit literally because it had been pre-planned. Who's behind um, it, Mark? Who's behind, the, who's behind the coup then? What's your feeling? Well, I don't think there's any foreign power behind the coup. I certainly hope not. Um, there seems to be no indication that that's the case. Uh, I'm not sure that is the case in some other parts of French-speaking Africa uh, with events we've seen in recent uh, uh, months. But it does seem here to be, you know, what's usually described as a palace coup. Uh, the, the, the leader who your viewers can see on the screen right now being carried aloft by his own men is actually a cousin of the president. He was head of the, uh, the presidential guard. Uh, it does seem very much to be an inside job. What about the position of France in all of this? I mean, clearly, former French colony, one can say. There's been, obviously, since independence, dealings with France are all along that line. What does France's role in the future, what, what, what do you think it could be? Or do you feel France really would be more and more separated from Gabon because of what has happened? Well, I guess we're only a day into these unfolding events. Uh, but I think France is in a difficult position. Uh, um, I think that, you know, at the moment, with so many difficulties and momentous undemocratic changes across French-speaking Africa, you know, France really does have its hands full. I don't think, I don't get the indication France was expecting it to happen in the way that, uh, that, that it has unfolded. I mean, certainly the recent relations between France and Gabon have been bumpy uh, since uh, uh, Sarkozy's time when they were good, to Hollande when they were really very bad, to being repaired under Macron uh, when the relations between him and Ali Volgo did quite considerably improve, I believe, um, uh, including to this world uh, conference. Uh, World Environmental Conference that happened in March. Um, but I think that you know, it's so difficult to say uh, what the relation will be with these, with these coup leaders. Uh, they don't seem, as far as I'm aware, to have any particular connection to France um, or, or links with France. It really does seem to be an inside, inside job. And uh, I think that France um, you know, must tread carefully. Uh, I think that uh, you know, given those recent bumpy relations, and by the way, that in our voter research, France, or, or rather, you know, French policy towards Africa was really deeply unpopular with uh, the voters in Gabon, uh, and that contrasted very poorly with uh, the uh, opinions of other countries, including China, including uh, attitudes towards the Commonwealth, British Commonwealth. I think that you know, France does need to tread carefully. Yet, on the other hand, it's also the only country that really is in a position to do anything, to act. France does have soldiers on the ground, albeit a small amount. It obviously has that you know, financial connection with Gabon uh, through the currency. Uh, you know, people are going to look to France to, to, to take the lead on this, and, and rightly so. Mark Percy, thank you very much for joining us. And I'll just uh, point out that uh, people in Gabon able to see this once again. Of course, France 24 was uh, blocked uh, in the wake of the election result. Uh, now, of course, available freely to everybody in Gabon to watch in uh, French or, or English or Arabic, depending which language they want to choose. Mark, your analysis, uh, much appreciated. Thank you for joining us. Mark Percy, founder and CEO of BTP Advisors. Thank you, sir, very much indeed. We, of course, watching for all developments on the situation in Gabon for you. More analysis uh, to come.